Welcome back. I promise that we are going to go overlanding again at some point soon, uh, but for now we are still enjoying the winter season and something that is, I guess, on a lot of people's minds right now is that of uh, fuel economy. <laughs> You'll never guess why. Uh, but with that, I figured it would be time to go ahead and answer this kind of as a frequently asked question. There are countless numbers of times that people have asked me about fuel economy on our 2007 Toyota Sequoia. So with that, I figured that we'd go ahead and talk about it. We take a few minutes to talk about it. So I'm going to tell you what kind of fuel economy we get with this vehicle. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference that the modifications we have made to it. And we'll talk about a few ways that you could possibly improve it. One thing to keep in mind is that I've not religiously tracked the fuel economy. I've just sort of kept an eye on it and I have calculated it by hand on a couple occasions. I don't have like, you know, two years of, you know, intensely kept records on it though. So take all of this with a grain of salt. One quick thing before we get going on this video, I do want to give a shout out to my friend Dave at Wasatch Motor Company. Uh, there's going to be a link up here in the corner for his channel. I think it would be really helpful for you guys to know about him because he's also producing some Toyota Sequoia related content on his YouTube channel. You might know if you followed us for a long time that we have tried out a bunch of different variations for camping with our Sequoia. Whereas he specifically focused his efforts on, you know, building out in the back of his Sequoia and he's done a really impressive job. So I'd recommend you go check out his channel and uh, I'm sure you'll find some great content there as well. Now, the first thing to keep in mind about this vehicle is that it is a 2007. So this is the refreshed version of the first generation, which means that we are getting a horsepower upgrade or getting a five-speed automatic transmission as opposed to the earlier ones that had a four-speed. With that comes a small improvement in fuel economy. So take that in mind that the 05s through 07s might be a little bit better than the 01s to 04s. So when we first bought this vehicle and it had no modifications whatsoever, it was still rolling on the factory tire size and all seasons at that and also had nothing on the roof, we got approximately 18 or 19 on the highway and I'd say about 13 or 14 around town, which is actually pretty good in my mind for, for a vehicle that's as big as it is, has a naturally aspirated V8, is the age it is, and uh, has a curb weight that's over 5,000 pounds. I think that's pretty good actually. And there might've actually been a time or two that I cracked 20 MPG when I was doing some back highway driving, you know, the kind of driving where you're keeping consistent speeds around 65 miles per hour. So most, most ideal scenario possible, you could maybe get 20 on a stock Sequoia. More realistically though, once you take the vehicle and modify it to this level, as you see it here, uh, you're going to see a pretty big dip. So as soon as we put on the lift and tires and then our rooftop tent, uh, we probably drop down to about, I'd say, 16 or 17 on the highway and around 12 or 13 around town. And I'd say that highway was closer to 16 most of the time. So not great. But once again, not terrible considering how big of a vehicle it is. Now, honestly, one of the biggest things to keep in mind when you're talking about fuel economy and modifying an overlanding vehicle is going to be the tires. So we have uh, 255 80 17s. Now you'll note that this is much different than what a lot of people choose to go with. Most people will choose 285 70 17s. And based on, I guess the research I've done and the general opinions I've heard is that the 255 seem to be doing maybe one MPG better than the 285s. That thinner width is really helpful at reducing your rolling re resistance as you roll down the road. So I'd recommend if you're willing to take a thinner tire and you're really interested in saving some fuel, this is a great way of doing it. And these are still great because they're still a true 33 inch tall tire. And I think they look good. We also have these in the Toyo Open Country AT2s. Uh, these have since been replaced by the AT3, but I mentioned that to say that these are a pretty mild all-terrain tire. So, you know, if you stepped up to a more aggressive all-terrain tire, maybe like the BFG KO2s or something like that, uh, those, because of their tread pattern, are also likely to maybe reduce your fuel economy a little bit. So going with a thinner tire and with a more mild all-terrain is a good way of saving some fuel. All right, now we'll go ahead and talk about a few things that you might be able to do in order to improve your fuel economy. And 
I'll preface all this by saying that there's not a lot that you can do. There are some things you can do to kind of maximize it, but truth be told, a vehicle like this is never gonna make you really happy in this regard. So first of all, um, limit anything you can on the roof of your vehicle. So, you know, there was a time where uh, on our previous vehicle, on the Blazer, um, I kept all sorts of things on the roof of our vehicle, like storage bins and stuff like that. If you can avoid it, just don't put it back there. The awesome thing about our Sequoia is that it's got plenty of internal space. And if you can take those things off of the roof, like storage bins or whatever, and put them in the back of your car, then that's going to make things all, you know, a lot better. So I'd recommend starting there. And then also, you know, here in the Intermountain West, at most fuel stations, the the lowest grade fuel you can get is 85 octane. And I've heard that you can improve your MPGs a little bit by stepping up to 87. That's a little bit more common in other parts of the country. Yes, you do pay more for 87 versus 85, but I've heard that the, uh, the value uh, might be a little bit better in regards to your MPGs versus cost. But also, if you're going on a long distance, you know, run out in the desert or something like that and you need maximum range and cost isn't as important to you, then I would say go ahead and get the 87 because that extra range might make a big difference for you. And then of course, you know, there's the usual tips like, you know, uh, be lighter on your acceleration, do a tune-up, keep your vehicle maintained, you know, stick to highway driving when you can. Also, just, I guess, don't drive as often as you might during a time like this. Like, for instance, right now, um, I'm fortunate enough to be working from home most days, and that means that we're frankly just not driving the Sequoia very much. I know not everybody has the luxury of doing that, but... Um, Anytime you can cut down on everyday driving and take that gas and put it into fun trips, you know, that's obviously uh, a lot more fun. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you if you're considering buying a Toyota Sequoia and you're curious to know about the fuel economy of it and how bad it is. If you, if you own one of these, you already know how bad it is. So you don't need me to tell you. Make sure that you check out our affiliate links in the description. We've got all sorts of gear that we love to use. All of the links in the description is gear that we recommend. And of course, if you do choose to purchase any of those things, we do get a little kickback from it. So thank you for using those. Also, make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed to our channel. Later on in the next couple days, Lakin and I are excited to reveal to you guys our new to us Toyota. That's right. We bought another Toyota and we're really excited to share it with you guys because in my opinion, it's probably the best used adventure vehicle to own in 2022. And we'll explain more about that later. So make sure you subscribe to see that video. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.